Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Dear learners, welcome to the session of managerial economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain, working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLU University, Mathura. So, let us start with our today's session. Before we start, let us look at the topics we have covered in our previous session. In our last session, we have talked about law of demand, which state that keeping other thing constant, when the price of commodity increases, the demand for that commodity decreases and vice versa. So, here in this lecture, we have discussed about law of demand, law of diminishing marginal utility and this laws explain how the marginal utility of any item decreases as in when we keep on consuming that commodity. Thereafter, we have talked about the reasons behind law of demand, why there is an existence of law of demand and why does it happen when the price of any commodity increases, its demand decreases. That happens because of the substitution effect because we have substitutes available in the market. So, in case in price of any commodity increases, people shift their demand to the substitute product. It is also because of the income effect, though the income of a person is not changing because we have already assumed it to be constant. But yes, whenever the price of any commodity reduces or increases, it, it affects the purchasing power of a person. So, when a price of a commodity decreases, the purchasing power of a person increases and they can demand more of that commodity which causes the increase in the demand. Thereafter, we have seen the relationship of law of diminishing marginal utility with law of demand which also suggests that as and when we keep on consume any commodity, its marginal utility decline. And for a rational person before making any choice, they always analyze their cost and benefit. So, people are ready uh, to pay up to the point where their price is equal to the utility, but definitely they would not like to make uh, you know a purchase where prices are more than utility. So, simply with this law of diminishing marginal utility, we can say when the prices are low for any commodity, people can demand more of the quantity of that commodity because the marginal utility keeps on decreasing. The another reason we have talked here is the new consumer, the people who are not able to afford that commodity earlier. Now, because the price of that commodity decreases, it becomes affordable and new set of customer add to it, which increases the demand. And lastly, we have talked about the different uses of commodity. In this, we have seen that there are certain commodities which can be used for different purposes, right? But because when the price of those commodities are higher, we use them for their very specific purpose, whereas when the price reduces, we try to use them more and more for different purposes which increases their demand. So, there were some reasons because of which law of demand exists, that is what we have discussed here in this point. Thereafter, we have talked about exceptions to law of demand. The law of demand says that when price of any commodity increases, its demand decreases, but yes, there are certain areas where law of demand does not work. Like in the case of Giffen goods, those are the special categories of inferior good. Like in case of those goods which are, uh, you know, purchased for maintaining or uh, representing the status in the society, right? Uh, the goods uh, which are of uh, having no substitute, right? Or the goods in case of emergencies we are requiring. So, there also law of demand does not exit or the items on which we spend very insignificant proportion of our income, necessary items, right? So, these are some reasons where we have discussed that uh, these are the areas where law of demand will not work. Thereafter, we have also talked about supply, which is again very important because when we have talked about demand, it is also important for us to know what supply is and supply is basically from the producer. So, it represents the willingness and the ability of a producer to supply at a given price at a given point of time, right. Thereafter, we have seen about market equilibrium. Market equilibrium is the state of balance where the ad aggregate demand is equal to the aggregate supply, right. When demand and supply is equal, that means our market is in equilibrium and which represent that the consumers are ready to buy on the price on which the sellers are also ready to sell. 
Thereafter, we have also talked about the determinants of supply, what are the factors which affect the supply of a commodity. Again, the prime being the uh, you know most prominent factor which affects the supply, but yes, here in the case of supply, the impact of price will be positive. In case of demand, there is an inverse relationship between the demand and price because consumer wants to demand more on the lesser price, whereas supplier wants to supply more on the higher price because that will generate revenue for them. And the other factors are like the cost of production, like state of technology, like number of firms uh, available, government policies also affect the supply of any commodity. So, again there are different determinants which affects the supply and those were discussed. Thereafter, we have talked about the law of supply. Again, in the case of law of supply, we assume other factors to be constant, the other determinants which can affect the supply. We here understand the effect of price on the supply and we see that whenever the price of any commodity increases, the supply for that commodity also increases. And in the last heading, we have talked about supply function which represents the mathematical relationship between the demand and its determinants. We have talked about the schedule which also shows the uh, you know tabular representation of different quantities supplied at different prices. Supply curve is a graphical representation of demand, you know supply schedule where we have seen there is a direct relationship between the supply and the price and the supply curve will always be upward sloping. And lastly, we have talked about the shifts in supply curve and supply curve will shift either upward or downward because of change in the factors other than price. Right. If supply will increase, it will shift to the right, uh, right and when supply will decrease, it will shift to the left. Right. So, these were the topics which were discussed in our previous class and now let us look at the learning objective of today's session. In this session, we are going to talk about uh, you know how we can understand the concept of elasticity and how this elasticity concept is being used in calculating different uh, you know decisions in the management. So, to comprehend and to apply the concept of elasticity, here we are going to calculate price elasticity of demand cross elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand as well as price elasticity of demand. So, these are the headings which we are going to cover in our today's session and these are the learning objectives which you are going to get. So, let us start with the very first where we are going to talk about elasticity of demand. Now, what is meant by this elasticity? Elasticity is basically going to help you to understand the change taken place. right? how much change has been taken place in the quantity demanded because of change in the factors affecting the demand. So, the elasticity concept will explain you the quantitative aspect. right? In law of demand, we have seen that we have only studied whenever the price increases, demand will decrease or whenever the price decrease, price will increase and vice versa. This is what we have studied in law of demand, but we were not able to identify what change has been taken place in the quantity demanded. right? So, with the elasticity concept, we are able to understand what change has been taken place and that is why we are saying it as in quantitative aspect of price demand relationship. The elasticity of demand is the ratio of change in the quantity demanded due to the change in the variables affecting the demand. So, very simple we can define elasticity of demand that means what change has been taken place in the quantity demanded due to the factors change affecting the demand. Right? Uh, it can be the price also, it can be the income also, it can be the price of related goods also, it can be the taste and preference also, it can be the advertisement of that commodity. So, whatever the factors, whatever the determinants of demand we have discussed, because of that if the quantity demanded changes and we are studying one specific factor at a time, that is to be considered as an elasticity of demand. So, the degree of responsiveness of demand to the change in its determinant is called as elasticity of demand. Moving ahead, we can uh, read out the definitions given by different people regarding this elasticity of demand and sometimes we also define it in terms of change, in, uh, change taking place in the price because we all know price is the most important factor which affects the demand of any commodity. So, in the words of Professor A. Crencross, the elasticity of demand for a commodity is the rate at which the quantity bought changes as the price changes. Right? What change has been taken place in the quantity demanded because of change in the price of that commodity, 
that is basically considered to be as an elasticity of demand. Whereas, in the words of Professor Istham, the elasticity of demand is the measure of the responsiveness of quantity demanded to the change in price. Okay. So, almost the same thing we are talking here, but in a broader sense when we talk about elasticity of demand, elasticity of demand means whenever we are understanding the change, whenever we are calculating the change taking place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the factors affecting demand and these factor can be price, can be income, can be any other determinant which affects the demand. Right? So, now this is how we calculate it, this is the formula through which we can calculate the elasticity of demand. Elasticity of demand can be denoted this way small e and then d for demand, right? percentage change of the quantity demanded delta q upon delta right, p or you can say the determinants of demand, whatever the determinants of demand we are calculating. If we are calculating it with the price, so we will write change in the price. If we are calculating it with the income, then we will uh, you know write the change in income or whatever the factor we are studying at that point of time, we will denote it accordingly. So, right now we are saying that elasticity of demand is equals to percentage change in the quantity demanded divided by percentage change in the determinants of demand. Right. Now, here we are going to understand the difference between the law of demand and the elasticity of demand. Right. As you all know what law of demand is and what is elasticity of demand, now you will be able to make out the difference between these two concepts. Starting with the very first point, we are going to understand the meaning. Right. Law of demand as we have studied that it state keeping other factors to be constant when price increases, demand decreases and when price decreases, demand increases right so vice versa takes place in case of law of demand whereas in elasticity of demand what we are doing we are measuring the change okay in law of demand we are only calculating or we are only establishing the relationship between the price and demand whereas in elasticity of demand we are measuring the change in the quantity demanded due to the change in the factors affecting the uh, demand right if you look at the nature of uh, both Law of demand is qualitative in nature because it is only establishing the relationship whereas elasticity of demand is quantitative in nature right it is helping you to measure that change. So, that is why this concept is qualitative uh, quantitative in nature right. If you look at the relationship in law of demand we are only establishing the relationship between the price and the demand right law of demand specify that there is an inverse relationship because we are only studying the impact of price on demand and price is inversely related to the demand. So, here the relationship will only be negative or inverse you can say whereas as because elasticity can uh, you know establish the relationship between the price, income, taste and preference, price of related goods. So, here the relationship can be positive also, negative also or there can be a zero impact. Okay. And lastly we are saying that uh, there are they are factors which we are considering for law of demand is only price. Price is the only factor which has been taken into the consideration for the study of law of demand. Whereas, in elasticity of demand we can establish the relationship how much change has been taken place in the quantity demanded due to the price, income, substitutes, advertisement and so on. Right. So, this is how we basically differentiate between the law of demand and the elasticity of demand. Uh, one thing which you can remember is law of demand is a qualitative aspect because it only establish the relationship which only help us to understand that price has a inverse relationship with the demand. Whereas, in the elasticity concept we not only establish the relationship, but we also find out the change taken place, how much change right has been taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the factors affecting demand. And here the relationship can be inverse, it can be positive that means uh, negative relationship can be there, it can there can be a positive relationship or there can be a situation where there is no change taking place. Okay. So, now let us move back to the concept of elasticity and here we are going to understand the different type of elasticities. Okay. So, the concept of elasticity is already known to every one of us now where we have understood that here we are going to measure the change taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the factors affecting the demand 
Now we are going to understand the different types of elasticities and majorly we are going to talk about the price elasticity, income elasticity and cross elasticity. Though there can be different elasticities which can be discussed and there can be different types of elasticities like advertisement elasticity can be studied, taste and preference elasticities can be studied. So that depends upon the factor which you are taking into the consideration for your study. But as we all know these are the most important factors which affects the demand of any commodity. So for that reason we are going to talk about price elasticity, income elasticity and cross elasticity in detail. So let us start with the price elasticity. This name will only help you to understand what are we going to do in this elasticity. So very simply we can say that with price elasticity of demand we try to find out how much change taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the price of the commodity. So price elasticity of demand can be defined as the ratio of percentage change in the quantity demanded of a commodity to the percentage change in its own price, right. If you are talking about a commodity X, then what change has been taken place in the demand of commodity X because of change in the price of commodity X. So this is how we write uh, this formula to calculate this price elasticity where we are saying percentage change in the quantity demanded upon percentage change in price. The another way of writing this formula can be percentage change that is the delta Q upon delta P and the another way you can write down here is Q1 minus Q that means the uh, you know new quantity is Q1 and the older quantity which was demanded on the old price was Q that means the difference among the both divided by the old quantity and then new price minus the old price divided by the old price. So this is how we uh, use this formula to calculate the change taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the price. Now let us look at the degrees of price elasticity, right? Price elasticities are further divided into five types because there are different types of commodities which are available and these commodities have different, uh, you know, impact. They, they have different impact of prices, right? So here we have classified the degrees of price elasticities into five types. We have perfectly elastic demand, we have perfectly inelastic demand, relatively elastic, unitary elastic and relatively elastic. So these are the 5 degrees of price elasticities depending upon the nature of commodity we have different impact of prices on the quantity demanded. So let us start with the very first point where we are going to understand perfectly elastic demand. Perfectly elastic demand is the case where the price uh, you know even if the price is not changing, right, causing no change in the price effects, lot of change in the quantity demanded and that is why we are denoting this perfectly elastic demand with infinity, okay. So perfectly elastic demand is denoted this way, here your elasticity will be infinite, okay. So demand is said to be perfectly elastic if the quantity demanded increases infinitely or by unlimited quantity with a small fall in price or quantity demanded falls to zero with a small rise in the price, this is known as infinite elasticity, okay. So this is the case of perfectly elastic demand and this is how we represent it on the graph. You can see that on the x-axis we have quantity demanded and on the y-axis we are representing the demand and this line shows that there is no change in the price taken place even that at the same prices different quantities are being demanded that is Q1, Q2 and Q3. So a lot of change has been taking place in the quantity demanded with no change in the price and that is how we define it as an perfectly elastic demand and this is the case which does not exist in a real life situation because there are no such goods basically where we have this perfectly elastic demand without a change in the price causes lot of change in the quantity demanded. So this was your perfectly elastic demand then we have perfectly inelastic demand right now this is just an opposite to it. Now here the demand is perfectly elas inelastic and that is why we are denoting it with 0, right. Our price elasticity in this case will be equals to 0 and in this case what happened, a perfectly inelastic demand is the one where there is no 
change produced in the demand of the product with the change in its price right now even if you are increasing the price or the price are decreasing even if there is no change in the quantity demanded the quantity demanded will remain same and this is how we represent perfectly in elastic demand where the elasticity is equals to zero an example can be medicine an example can be salt right if the price of salt increases you can't uh, you are not going to decrease its consumption even if the price of salt decreases you will not increase its consumption so in this case your demand will remain same there will be no change in the case of medicines also if the price of medicine reduces will you start taking more medicines no right even if the price of medicine increases will you stop taking those medicines which are been prescribed for you no so in these cases even if the price of that commodity increases or decreases the demand does not get affected and this is the case of perfectly inelastic demand where the elasticity is equals to zero moving ahead we have unitary elastic demand now what is this unitary elastic demand here the elasticity will be equals to 1 that means whatever the change has been taking place in the quantity demanded is equals to the change taking place in the price of the commodity right the change is equal so when the proportionate change in the demand produces the same change in the price of the product the demand is referred to as unitary elastic and the numerical value we are associating here is equals to 1 and one thing which you have to remember here is the curve which we are going to study here is in the shape of rectangular hyperbola let me show you the curve this is how we represent the unitary elastic demand which says that earlier when the price was p1 the quantity demanded was m1 and when price increases to p the demand decreases to m right and the change which is taking place here is same here the uh, price change in price is equals to the change in demand say suppose if the price decreases by 5% then demand increases by also 5% so the percentage change here is same and the shape which we are getting here for the curve is known as rectangular hyperbola okay so this is the shape which we call for the unitary elastic demand that is rectangular hyperbola then we have relatively elastic demand now this is the case where elasticity is lesser than 1 okay when elasticity is lesser than 1 we can say that the demand is said to be relatively elastic if the percentage change in demand is greater than the percentage change in the price a lesser change in the price causes more change in the quantity demanded there we call it as an relatively elastic demand and we represented it elasticity is greater than 1 so example is also written if the price falls by 5% suppose and the demand rises by more than 5% say 10% the demand increases then it is the case of uh, you know relatively elastic demand and usually that happens in case of luxurious goods right usually in the case of luxurious items whenever their price in uh, decreases their demand increases more than uh, the proportionate change taken place in the price of that commodity right like example of car you can take television furniture so in these cases your demand is relatively inelastic and when we represent it on the graph we represented it in this way where you can see clearly a lesser change in the price causes more change in the quantity demanded therefore the elasticity is always greater than one moving ahead we have relatively inelastic demand now this is the case where more change in the prices causes a lesser change in the quantity demanded therefore here the elasticity is lesser than one so the demand is said to be relatively inelastic if the percentage change in the quantity demanded is lesser than the percentage change in the price that is if there is a small change in demand taking place and which case causes a greater change in the price it is called so called as less elastic or simply inelastic demand so again we are seeing here when the price falls by 10% but the demand rises only by say 5% then it is a case of relatively inelastic demand and here is uh, how we represent this relatively inelastic demand more change in the price causes lesser change in the demand a percentage change in the demand is lesser than change in the price and usually this happen in case 
of items of addiction right people who are addictive of certain items even if the price of those commodity increases their demand does not decreases much so these are the different degrees of price elasticities we have talked about five degrees we have for price elasticity perfectly elastic perfectly elastic like i said is an uh, you know imaginary situation that does not happen in a real case we do not have any such goods where even if there is no change taking place in the price causes lot of change in the quantity demanded right then we have perfectly inelastic demand this is the case where even if the prices increases or decreases that demand does not changes right quantity demanded will remain same and that happens usually in the case of items like salt like medicines okay whereas in case of unitary elastic demand in this case there causes a equal change in the price as well as quantity demanded okay whatever the percentage has been increased in the price the same percentage change has been taken place in the quantity demanded and this is unitary elastic where your elasticity is equals to 1 and usually that happens in the case of uh, you know clothes uh, when whenever we buy clothes uh, usually this uh, unitary elastic pattern is been seen and the curve is called as rectangular hyperbola curve then we have relatively elastic demand where the elasticity is greater than 1 in this case a lesser change in the price causes more change in the quantity demanded and this happens usually in case of luxurious goods we denote it with elasticity greater than 1 and lastly we have talked about relatively inelastic demand where the elasticity is lesser than 1 right a more change in the price causes lesser change in the quantity demanded and that happens usually in the items of addiction okay so let us move further next topic we are going to talk about here is the methods right what are the methods through which we can calculate this price elasticity of demand we have seen the degrees how price is affecting the demand of commodities differently depending upon the nature of that commodity so here we have three methods which we are going to discuss for calculating the price elasticity of demand the very first method is called as ratio or percentage method then we have arc elasticity method and the third one is your total outlay method so let us talk about the very first method where we are going to discuss ratio or percentage method some people also called it as in point elasticity method because this method basically help you to measure the elasticity at a specific point what change has been taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the price we calculate it through the ratio or percentage method and the met, uh, you know formula to calculate this Uh, price elasticity by ratio or percentage method is very simple this is how we write it q2 minus q1 that is the new quantity minus the previous quantity upon q1 whole upon p2 minus p1 divided by p1 p2 is again the new price the change price and the previous price this we can also write delta q upon q delta p upon p and we are talking about the price of same commodity so we are representing it here for the same commodity right this is how we can calculate what change has been taken place in the quantity demanded because of change in the price of a commodity right so this is again a very simple way of calculating price elasticity and the simple formula can be used to measure price elasticity by the ratio or percentage method moving ahead with the next method is called as arc elasticity method this arc elasticity method is an extension to your ratio and percentage method when uh, we want to measure the elasticity between two points see like i said percentage or ratio method will help you to measure the elasticity at a specific point whereas when we talk about the arc when we talk about the arc on the demand curve and we want to measure the elasticity between these two points right so at in that case we are going to use this arc elasticity method arc elasticity method is helping you to find out the uh, you know relationship or find out the change taken place between two points then we use this arc elasticity method moreover measuring price elasticity at a single point does not represent the full arc that is why also people use this arc elasticity method so to avoid any confusion and to have a full representation of complete arc between the quantity 1 and the price 1 as well as the change quantity and the change price usually people take the average of two prices and two quantities as a base to calculate it so this is how we represent 
the formula of arc elasticity method earlier we have only taken the previous price and the previous quantity in the base when we have calculated it through the ratio or percentage method but with the arc elasticity method we take the previous price and the new price as well as the old quantity and the new quantity uh, as a base to represent the full arc or to represent the full elasticity between two points right so that depends upon the purpose if you want to calculate the elasticity at a single point you use this ratio or percentage method or when you want to represent the full arc or you want to measure the elasticity between two points we use this formula given by arc elasticity method we do have the another method of calculating the price elasticity which is called as total outlay method right and this method is uh, you know different from the previous two method because the previous two methods were able to give you elasticity in numbers right where you can easily say whether the elasticity is greater than 1 lesser than 1 or equals to 1 or equals to 0 a where in case of total outlay method just by looking at the expenditure and how do we find out this total outlay total outlay is basically the total expenditure which can be easily calculated by price into quantity right when we multiply the price, uh, price with the quantity we get the total outlay and looking at the figures of total outlay we can simply say that whether the product, product is of elastic nature or inelastic nature or it is of unitary elastic right so it will only help you to know the nature of that commodity but this method will not be giving you the elasticity in exact number like we were getting in our previous two methods right so let us look how we calculate uh, the price elasticity with this uh, total outlay method here is a situation one we are considering you can see this table in this we have three columns in the very first column we have the prices and then in the next column we are representing the quantity demanded and there in the third column we are having this total outlay right so when the price of apple was 12 rupees and the quantity demanded was 10 rupees uh, 10 kgs so the total outlay was 120 okay at the price 12 people were demanding 10 kgs of apple which gives you the total outlay of 120 and you can see when the price of this apple reduces from 12 rupees to 10 rupees the demand increases right people shifted their demand from 10 kgs to 12 kgs but you can see the total outlay remains the same here there is no change in the total outlay that means whatever the change has been taken place in the price of the commodity the same proportionate change has been taken place in the demand of that commodity which keeps your total outlay equal that means this product is unitary elastic the elasticity here is equals to 1 because the total outlay remains the same right moving ahead let us discuss the second situation same we have taken the three columns here also we are representing the price when the price of apple was 12 rupees the quantity demanded was 10 which makes the total outlay of 120 now we can see when the price reduces to rupees 10 but the demand now increase from 10 kgs to 14 kgs that means a lesser change in the price causes more change in the quantity demanded here your total outlay will increase to 120 from 120 140 to 120 right so uh, here this total outlay represents that the product is of elastic nature that means a lesser change in the price causes more change in the quantity demanded and here the elasticity is greater than 1 ok moving ahead we have this third uh, you know point to understand whether the product is of elastic or inelastic nature again we have taken the same example at price 10, uh, 12 people were demanding 10 kgs of apple where the total outlay was 120 price reduced to 10 rupees quantity demanded increased right the quantity demanded increased but the increase is very little right and you know total outlay reduced to 110 that means a more change in the price causes a lesser change in the quantity demanded quantity demanded change but there is a lesser change taken place in the quantity demanded and because of that the total outlay reduced from 120 to 110 which represent the product is of inelastic nature right there will be a change taking place in the quantity demanded but a lesser change is going to take place because the product is of inelastic nature right and here the elasticity is lesser than 1 right the elasticity is lesser than 1 in this case so i believe these methods are also clear 
three methods we have discussed here ratio or percentage method the very first method this method is used to calculate the elasticity at a specific point right and there is a little change for calculating this method we use only the previous quantity and the uh, previous price for calculating the uh, elasticity at a specific point whereas in arc elasticity method we use this when we want to measure the elasticity between two points and to represent the full arc we use this arc elasticity method and we make some change to our previous method formula where we are also taking the previous quantity and the new quantity as a base as well as previous price and the new price as a base okay and the third is your total outlay method here in this method you are not going to get elasticities in terms of number but yes looking at the figures of total outlay you can find out whether the product is of elastic nature inelastic nature or it is unitary elastic okay so now let us move to the uh, you know linear demand curve here in this curve i have shown the different points of elasticity we have studied you can see that when the demand curve is of linear uh, nature we have this formula to calculate elasticity of price where we are putting suppose if i give a name to these point this is a b and this is suppose m point right so at the middle point we have elasticity equals to when above to this we have elasticity greater than 1 and then we have infinity and below to this we have elasticity lesser than 1 and then elasticity is equals to 0 so here in this formula what we use is we use the lower segment of the demand curve upon the upper segment of the demand curve here we can also write it like we have denoted it the lower segment will be mb and the upper segment will be am so this is how we would be able to represent the different degrees of price on the linear demand curve right now we have determinants of price elasticity of demand what are the uh, factors which affect the price elasticity of demand and how different commodities are differently associated with the price elasticity of demand so the very first point is the nature of the commodity so nature of commodity has a considerable impact on the elasticity whether the product is of uh, you know luxurious good or product is a necessary goods that depends uh, you know th that affects the lot of uh, uh, commodity right so nature of commodity has a considerable impact on the elasticity because if the product is of luxurious nature right when the product is of luxurious nature that that means that product is more of inelastic nature because here whenever the price of these commodity increases okay so now let us talk about the determinants of price elasticity of demand the very first point talk about the nature of commodity nature of commodity has a very significant impact on the elasticity concept we can say that the necessary goods are of inelastic nature because these are necessary goods even if the price of these commodity uh, you know changes much but their demand does not affect it right or it affected very less because they are a necessary goods whereas the item of luxuries or luxuries goods are of elastic nature because whenever the price of these commodities changes their demand affects a lot okay so the nature of commodity is the very first point where we have studied that inelastic uh, nature uh, necessary goods are of inelastic nature whereas luxurious goods are of elastic nature then second is availability and proximity of substitute yes again this is important if the substitute of any commodity is available definitely the demand for that product is of elastic nature because if the price of that commodity will decrease people will shift their demand to the another commodity but in case if the availability of substitute is not there suppose you are having a petrol car and the price of petrol increases you will not be able to change your petrol car overnight into a diesel car right so you are not left with any choices you have to fill up your tank with the petrol on the higher prices also so in this case the demand will be of inelastic nature okay so if the substitutes are not available the demand will be inelastic and if the substitutes of the commodities are available demand will be of elastic nature alternative uses of commodities yes of course there are items which can be used for different purposes like electricity can be used for different purposes like milk can be used for different purposes so there are many items which can be used for different purposes these are just example i am giving you so when the price of these goods increases what we do 
we try to make their use very specific and we try to use them for their very purpose, very specific purpose, right, or for, for which they are being used uh, particularly, right, and we stop using their other uses which are not required very much. So, basically the demand of these items are of elastic nature, okay. The items which are used for different purposes are of elastic nature because whenever their price increases or decreases, we shift our usage of these commodities, right. Whereas the demand for the items which cannot be replaced, like if we want calculator, if we want to calculate something which can be done through a calculator only, then in that case the demand for that item will be of inelastic nature because we cannot avoid that specific use of uh, that commodity, right. So, the commodities which are used for some specific purpose, demand for those commodities are of inelastic nature, whereas the commodities which can be used for different purposes, the demand for those commodities are of elastic nature. Then proportion of income spent on the commodity, again, again very important, right. The uh, items on which you spend a very insignificant proportion of your income, like matchbox, if the price of matchbox increases, will you reduce your demand for the consumption, how many matchboxes are you going to buy? Not more than two or three, right? So, it hardly matters to you even if the price of matchbox increases or decreases, you will not, you know, change its demand much. So, comparatively, the items on which we spend a very insignificant proportion of our income, they are of inelastic nature, whereas the items on which we spend comparatively a significant proportion of our income they are of elastic nature. So, if their price changes, definitely our demand going to get affected. Time is also important factor. In short run, usually the demand is of inelastic nature because we do not have much choices. As we already know, short run is a period which is not enough for us to change to any new situation. Whatever we are having, we can do the best with it, right. So, usually in short run, the demand for the commodities are of inelastic nature, whereas in long run, because it is a planning horizon, we can plan out, we can have different options where we can explore them. So, that is of elastic nature. The example which I have given you, right, in case of availability of substitute, suppose right now I am having a petrol car, but in future I might shift to uh, an EV vehicle, right, electronic vehicle I can uh, shift to or I can buy a diesel car. So, in long run, usually the demand is of elastic nature. Then we have durability of commodities, yes, the commodities which are of recurring nature, right, which we demand again and again are of inelastic nature, whereas uh, durable consumer goods are having demand of elastic nature because we are not demanding them again and again. So, whenever we demand them, we usually refer to their prices and we can also shift their demand for a period of time. So, that is why the demand for durable consumer goods are of elastic nature. Whereas, demand of those goods which comes again and again or which we demand again and again are of inelastic nature. And lastly, we have items of addiction, items of addiction, yes, the items which are of addictive nature, their demand is definitely inelastic. People who have a habit of drinking tea, right, those who are addicted to drink tea, so usually the price of uh, tea increases, then also their demand does not affect it much. So, in this case, the demand will be inelastic. So, these are some determinants of price elasticity of demand. I hope it is clear to every one of you. Now, we have implications also, right? Whatever we have talked about price elasticity of demand, what it is, what are the different degrees we have, how do we calculate it, what factors affect it, but what is the implication of price elasticity of demand? Why are we studying this, right? What help it is going to provide us? So, these are some answer to this question which I am asking right now that very first help it is going to provide to the monopolist, right. And who is the monopolist? Monopolist is a person who is single, uh, who is a single seller or does not have a, uh, you know, any competitor, right. He is the single seller in the market and the product which he is selling is also not having any substitute. So, he is ba basically the price maker, right. He himself charge the prices of the commodity. So, for monopolist also it is very important to know whether the product which he is selling is of elastic nature or inelastic nature, right. So, accordingly he can charge the prices, okay. If the product uh, for a monopolist is of inelastic nature, that means it is not going to change much even if there is a change in the price taking place. So, for the monopolist, 
what he can do if the product is of inelastic nature he can charge higher prices from the consumer because product is of inelastic nature but yes if his product is of elastic nature then definitely to increase his profit margin he should be reducing the price or he should reduce the price or sell it at a lesser price as compared to the product which is of inelastic nature so it is helpful for the monopolist to know whether the product is of elastic nature or inelastic nature because he is the price maker he has to determine the prices for his product and one thing also for monopolist monopolist is a person who can use price discrimination he can also charge different prices from different consumers for the same commodity so again for him he has to know for whom uh, the demand is of elastic nature and for whom the demand is of elastic nature then second is price determination yes of course not only for the monopolist but for the uh, you know other market structures also we have to determine the prices so how are we going to determine the prices of a commodity what factors uh, affect the demand of the commodity and as we all know price is a very important factor so how our product is been affected by the price right whether the product is of elastic nature or inelastic nature how are we going to determine the prices of those commodities there this price elasticity concept is very helpful then for taking up public utility services right public utility services are those services which are demanded by the public right like railways like water right like uh, like uh, you can say telephone services uh, you, you know these are some uh, utility transport facilities uh, these are some uh, public utility services and public utility services are of inelastic nature so government usually take those uh, public utility services who are uh, those who are in ela inelastic in nature they usually keep them under their control and does not give the control to the private uh, sector because in that case there are more chances of exploitation of customers right so for taking up public utility services which are of inelastic nature government try to keep those services with themselves okay otherwise the private people or the private owners will charge the higher prices of those services and in that case customer will be exploited then it is also helpful in uh, tax determination because you know government also determine the taxes and usually government charges more taxes on the commodities which are of inelastic nature right so for the determination of taxes also price elasticity concept is important uh, government can charge higher prices on those commodities which are of inelastic nature because their demand will not get affected much but yes of course the products which are of elastic nature usually uh, the tax rate should be lesser on those commodities because it will affect the price and when price will be affected their demand will also affect more and lastly we are also having the importance in international trade whenever we are exporting and importing certain items we can keep this consideration of price elasticity for bargaining purpose if suppose i am exporting some kind of a product which is of inelastic nature then definitely i can always charge higher prices from the uh, you know purchaser because my product is of inelastic nature but if i am exporting any item which is of elastic nature then definitely i have to compromise with the prices or i have to reduce the price so that i would be able to make a sale right so this is how we use the concept of price elasticity and this price elasticity concepts helps us to know the responsiveness of uh, you know quantity demanded or change in the quantity demanded due to the change in the price and we can apply this concept into different areas and different aspects to make a right decision right so i hope this elasticity of price is clear to every one of us and now let us move to the next type of elasticity which is called as income elasticity of demand right so this is how we are going to study how income will affect the change in the quantity demanded so as we all know income is also a very important determinant of demand and a higher income implies more purchasing power generating to the higher demand for commodities this is a simple statement we usually make that higher income will uh, let the higher purchasing power to the people and when people are person is having a more purchasing power they can demand more of the commodities but income elasticity can be defined as a degree of responsiveness of quantity demanded to the given change in income here we are going to study the impact on the quantity demanded due to the change in income and i believe all of you are able to understand up to this point that whatever the elasticity we are studying at that point of time we have to assume other factors to be constant like we have studied in law of demand 
right like in law of demand we were studying the relationship between the price and demand so we have assumed other factors to be constant same in the case of elasticity when we were establishing uh, the relationship of price on quantity demanded we have assumed other factors to be constant like income price of other goods race and preferences same is the case when i am establishing a relationship of income on quantity demanded i have to assume other factors to be constant so the citrus paribus assumption has to be made everywhere whenever we are studying this concept of elasticity because we are studying only one variable at a time right in the words of professor watson income elasticity of demand is the rate of change with respect to change in income or other determinants remaining constant as you can see here in the definition given by watson it is already written here keeping other factors constant we measure the change taken place in the quantity demanded due to the change in the income of a consumer now again these are the formulas or this is the way you can calculate the income elasticity here we are denoting income with y the percentage change in the quantity demanded upon percentage change in the income or the other way you can write is change in the quantity demanded upon initial uh, quantity demanded that means the previous quantity demanded on the previous income or the initial income so this is uh, another way of expanding the same formula and then you can also write q2 minus q1 upon q1 y2 minus y1 upon y1 y2 is the new income and y1 is the uh, initial income where uh, same is the case q2 is the new quantity demanded and q1 is the previous quantity demanded so these are the different ways of writing uh, the same method through which you can calculate income elasticity now let us look at the degrees of income elasticity like we have divided the price elasticities into five type same we have income elasticities degrees also and here we have divided them into zero income elasticity negative income elasticity and positive income elasticity now what is this positive income elasticity positive income elasticity says that whenever there is an increase in the income right whenever there will be an increase in the income of a consumer the quantity demanded for these goods will also increase and that is why it is having a positive income elasticity right so a good that has a positive income uh, elasticity is regarded to as a normal good right in case of normal goods we have this positive income elasticity because whenever the income of the consumer increases demand for these goods keeps on increasing and this happen usually in case of clothes jewelry etc so these are the normal goods and they are positively uh, uh, you know related with the quantity demanded in terms of income zero income elasticity there are certain goods right where there will be no change in the quantity demanded even if the income of a consumer increases right if my income increases i will not consume more of the salt if my income decreases i will uh, also not decrease my consumption of salt right so there are items in the case of uh, matchbox in the case of salt in case of medicines in case of postcards also so these are the items where there will be no effect taking place right where there will be no change taking place in the quantity demanded even if the income of a consumer increases or decreases and that is why we call it as an zero income elasticity next is the negative income elasticity as you can see the word negative implies the opposite right so inverse relationship is there so for the purchase of these commodity we can say that whenever the income of a consumer increases quantity demanded for these item will reduce right rather than they increase the demand for these commodities will be decreased because these goods are been treated as an inferior goods right inferior goods uh, there is no such definition for inferior goods and there are no such defined inferior good that depends upon the income level of a consumer maybe the goods which is superior for me is inferior for other and maybe the good which is inferior for me is superior for other okay so that depends upon the income level of a person but definitely whenever the demand for a uh, you know income of a person increases they will demand for more quality goods or the better quality goods so inferior goods are basically those goods which are lower in quality so you can give an example of like uh, quality of cereal the poor quality of cereals or the better quality of cereals you will start demanding when the income when your income increases so so these goods will have a negative income effect because uh, people will shift their demand to the better quality goods so this is how we establish the relationship 
of income with the quantity demanded and we have these three degrees positive income elasticity, zero and negative income elasticity. Then here we have also a curve which is called as angel curve and why we are talking this angel curves with this income elasticity of demand because here we have established the relationship of income with the quantity demanded and this angel curve was studied by Ernest Angel right he was a German statistician he had made a st extensive study extensive study of relationship between the income and the consumption of commodities right how he has studied this income uh, you know effect on the consumption of commodities let us look here he has given uh, the three commodities one are being considered to be as a necessary goods then we have luxurious goods and we have inferior goods also. So, in case of necessary goods we can see that the demand of these goods will increase initially whenever the income of the consumer increases but they will increase up to the point and thereafter it will not increase ok. The consumption of these goods will initially shift their demand but after a point of time they will become stable. There will be no further growth taking place even if the income of the consumer increases. Whereas, in case of luxurious goods the income of uh, whenever the income of the consumer increases the demand for these goods keeps on increases which establish again a positive relationship. Whereas, in case of inferior goods like I said these are the lower quality goods. So, whenever the income of a consumer increases demand for these goods not increase rather this will decrease ok. So, the demand curve is going backward which represent the quantity demanded will decrease for these goods when the income of a consumer going to increase. So, this is how the earnest angel established the income and the consumption pattern with different commodities right. Now, if we look at the implication of income elasticity of demand, income elasticity of demand is also very important for us to understand because different commodities, uh, different firms, different units, people who are producing goods which are of superior or inferior nature, they can they can easily find out what impact is going to take place on their quantity demanded if their income of the consumer is increasing or decreasing because we have different phases in the economy contraction and expansion phases take place. So, the people who are producing superior good they can expect there will be a rise in their commodity if the expansion in the economy taking place and vice versa. Then we have this cross elasticity of demand, cross elasticity of demand is basically the concept where we are establishing the relationship between the quantity demanded of commodity x because of and, and the change in the price of commodity y right, price of related goods right, what happen, uh, what happens in the uh, demand of the quantity of commodity x because of change in the price of commodity y. So, that particular relationship would be considered as an cross elasticity of demand and that is how we call it. So, here you have to uh, see this carefully that commodity x is going to be studied, demand for commodity x is going to be studied because of change in the price of commodity y. So, here again we have positive and negative cross elasticity positive cross elasticity will be there in case of substitute goods when the products are of substitute nature we can see that when the price of x increases the demand for uh, you know y increases the demand for y will increase when the price of x will increase because they are substitute people will shift their demand from one commodity to the another commodity right. So, cross elasticity we can say is having a positive uh, you know impact on the case of substitute goods whereas, it will have a negative impact in case of complementary goods because complementary goods are those goods which are demanded jointly right which creates a joint demand like car and petrol when price of one commodity increases the demand for the other commodity will decrease right. So, here there is a negative impact. For the implication of cross elasticity we can say that we can find out how many substitutes, how many uh, you know complementary goods are available for our commodity. It is again a very important aspect for the firms to know how many substitutes are available and how they are uh, related with the price of those commodities. So, for that we study this cross elasticity of demand and lastly like we have talked about the supply concept we have price elasticity of supply and as we all know supply is positively related to the price of any commodity. So, whenever the price of any commodity increases quantity supply the proportionate change taking place in the quantity supplied we study under this price elasticity concept ok and this is how we calculated percentage change in the quantity supplied of commodity x upon percentage change in the price of goods x right. So, 
these are the topics which we have covered today we are we have talked about the elasticity concept the different types of elasticities their implication and lastly we have talked about price elasticity of supply i hope it is clear to every one of you these are some reference books taken for this particular lecture thank you all of you